You're here to see the car hacking, right? Saw it on the telly. That is my car. Okay, that's a Mitsubishi Outlander Hybrid. I actually really like it. It's a good car, great for short journeys on electricity. Fuel costs virtually nothing. Really like it. Um, it's got a mobile app, but a lot of mobile apps out there, so the BMW, the Mercedes, the Jaguar ones, they all talk to the car using the cloud. So you can talk to the car anywhere in the world. Great idea. This one's different. You talk to it over Wi-Fi. So there's an access point on the car, you connect the phone directly to it, and then you can do things like turn the headlights on in the car park, set up a charging schedule so it charges on cheap rate electric at night, and lots of other things too. But because it's Wi-Fi, well, that got us interested. So we started looking at it, and first of all, the Wi-Fi network name, so it's remote in capitals, two numbers, four letters. The scary bit is the Wi-Fi key. That is set at the factory. I don't think you can change it. Four lowercase letters, six digits. And you all know that is not enough. It's not long enough. So we uh, captured that key. We cracked it on the rig we brought to InfoSec last year. And that has got four graphics cards and did it in four days. But you don't have to stand by the car for four days. You can crack the key, you capture it, and crack it offline. We built a much faster one. That's 16 graphics cards, latest NVIDIA processors, Awesome for 4K gaming, but we don't do that, do we? Um, and that'll crack it in about 12 hours. That cost about 4,200 quid, but obviously you can do loads of keys for that. If you want to do one key fast, though, load it up to someone like AWS, 1,000 pounds of computation time, and it will crack the key almost instantly. Sounds like a lot of money, 1,000 pounds. That's a 40,000 pound car. So we can crack the key in. How do we hack the car? Um, before we go into the hacking, I just want to mention this screenshot on the left-hand side. That's some Russian guy's um, garage, basically. He used to run a Bitcoin mining rig, and you can go on the website and rent that from him. He might be slightly cheaper than the thousand-pound AWS. I don't know, but anyway. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. I've got. We have previously connected our laptop up to the car, and we're going to do some man-in-the-middle kind of uh, attack to actually work out the protocol of the app. So when you turn the lights on and turn the lights on, we want to work out exactly what it sends to the car to potentially to see if we can replicate it. Now, if we come to my Ubuntu partition here, I've already got this loaded, um, the one that we've already done. Um, it's a packet capture of the uh, lights on, um, and if we... That's far, right? Is it? Shush. Um, so I'm just going to, oh, so it's already in hex dump. So where was I? Right, so TCP port 8080 it runs over. Um, and it's normally used for like a, a web proxy type protocol, but this, there's no HTTP going on here. It's just a simple binary um, uh, protocol. And if we go scroll down here, there's a whole load of stuff that being sent. You don't really need to know any of that. Um, what I'm interested in is this command here. Basically, 6F07001D5T is a lights command, and the, the two bytes after it, 00, is off, and 01 is on. That's it. That's all you need to do to send uh, the lights on. To turn, you know, all you need to do is send it to the car, and the, the lights will come on. Um, there's no encryption, there's no authentication, there's no unique identifier. That's it. There's just that, that's just you know crazy. It's, it, we were like, really? Is it that simple? And yes, it is. So we've written a quick um, uh, Python script to actually um, uh, replicate that. You do have to uh, create like a CRC error check at the end of the packet, otherwise the car rejects it. So that was the, the, the complicated bit. Um, and what we are going to do next is actually take the Wi-Fi um, uh, access point out of the car and do the similar type of thing we did with the thermostat. So actually retrieve the firmware from the device using potentially using the JTAG and then actually look at it and, and see if we can actually reverse engineer it. What we're really interested in is to make sure that the segregation between the Wi-Fi access point and the CAN bus is right. Otherwise, um, we could potentially turn on the car and do other bits and pieces. Um, Last year, Charlie Miller um, did some research on a Jeep um, in, over in the States. And what slightly different on the Jeep, it was over 3G. And he managed to get access to the CAN bus. Now, the Jeep actually um, parks itself. So the CAN bus can actually turn the steering wheel, and it has access to the accelerator and, and brakes. So this, Charlie was actually controlling the car remotely off the internet, which is crazy. The Mitsubishi won't be as bad as that because it's a Wi-Fi access point and it doesn't park itself. But judging by the simple um, protocol, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm holding uh, hopes for the uh, segregation on the, on, on the Mitsubishi. I don't know. But um, uh, it's a difficult one because obviously it's Ken's car. 40,000 40, pounds worth of um, brick, I don't know. Uh, Look, you killed one of the thermostats yesterday. Don't kill my car. I've got to drive it home and pick up the kids later, all right? But this is the bit we haven't shown in public before. This is the packet structure. 
This is how you format the messages. We're not going to tell you how to disable crazy stuff, but this is how you format messaging. 6F, it's a message. You then define the message length, because some messages need to be longer and shorter than others. You then tell it the command you want to send, so lights on. You then have a CRC, which is the complicated bit, and then you say on or off. It really is that straightforward. So I've got it set up over here, ready to go. Hopefully, this will work. If you can see, my lights on the car are now on. We've just lit up the, uh, the fire I stand with my headlights. It's that straightforward. Now, there's other things you can do, too. Do you remember the Nissan Leaf hack? Do you remember the way you could turn the AC on and drain the battery? You can do that. You can turn the heating on. You can heat up the driver. They don't like that very much. The most irritating attack you can do, though, is you can also mess around with the charging schedule and tell the car not to charge up, which is really annoying when you come down in the morning and there's no juice in the batteries. The worst one by miles, though, and this is why we thought it was that serious, is you can also disable the theft alarm. Now, over here, I've got the car. You can see the door is locked. See, the windows are folded. The car thinks it's locked. I've wound the window down, though. Obviously, I didn't want to smash it every time we did a demo, but the theft alarm, we sent it the codes. That's now off. You can also prise the door open. If you ever locked your keys in your car, the recovery services can um, open the door by just uh, uh, bulging out the top of it. But anyway, let's put my hand in there. Theft alarm is off. OK, there is nothing detecting me in that car. Even worse, I can reach in. I'm going to lock the car. That's a bit nuts, isn't it? Now, we put this to Mitsubishi uh, two months ago now. And um, I don't know if we caught them on a bad day. I think subsequently it turned out we spoke to them on the same day the emission scandal broke. Um, but they came back to us a, a week or so later and said they didn't think it was a problem, which we were a bit confused about. So we did what every security researcher does when the vendor won't cooperate, and we rang the BBC. And Rory Kethlin Jones spoke to them on our behalf last week. And um, now they think it's a serious security issue. Um, in fairness to Mitsubishi, I think they had a bit of a fail on the initial disclosure. They've been really good since then. They've been working all weekend to get a fix written. They invited us down there on Friday. We got a car off the production line. We looked at the latest one. We checked it. The hack still works. They've been very good and very responsive. They're working very hard on it. So don't diss them for that. Um, However, the reason we published the bug is because we also published a fix. We weren't going to leave people high and dry. If you've got one of these cars or with a friend with one, what you need to do is show them this. Go to the mobile app, connect to the car, hit cancel VIN registration. And what that does is it unpairs the phone from the car. And when the access point's got no pairings, it goes to sleep and the problem goes. It really is that straightforward. So it's easy to fix. There is another method that's on our website and Mitsubishi's website. Um, you go with the car, you turn the hazard flashes on, and you turn, you press the remote key 30 times, and that fixes it too. Um, but I, I prefer our method, personally. Um, there is a sting in the tail with this, though. It's a Wi-Fi device, and therefore it's trackable. Does anyone use Wiggle.net, the database of war drives? If not, you need to go and have a look. It's really, really good. And what happens there, people correlate the GPS coordinates of access points with their names. So you can work out where access points are in the world by their name. So usually they're at home or in the office, but this one's got four-wheel drive. And you can actually track it. Now, there are about 22,000 of these in the country, and there is a tiny sample of those plotted onto Google Maps. Those are at people's houses. So you can use the internet to find the cars. You can then go to them, capture the key, crack the key, and hack the car. And if you don't think Wiggle is serious, how useful this is, this is my car at InfoSec. My car's only been there for two days, and someone's already geolocated it and plotted it on Wiggle. Is that crazy? You can tr track these vehicles almost in real time. Now, there are some other things we're looking at, um, lots of other functions we're investigating. One which I thought was a bit confused about was in the mobile app, there's a function called change gun status. Is that like a, a special export model maybe, the James Bond version? I have to say, I haven't found the machine guns yet. I have had a good look. Maybe we'll find them in future. Who knows? Um, to wrap up though, so we're pen test partners. We're clearly pen testers. We do a lot of mobile apps and web apps. We do a lot of work in the Internet of Things. And uh, funnily enough, four car manufacturers came to us on Tuesday and said, uh, could you look at the security of our Wi-Fi access points on our cars? Uh, OK, yeah, we can help you there. Um, and to wrap up, finally, well, we've disabled the alarm on the car. We've got access to the car. We can steal anything we want out of it if we want. But from this one, I'm going to steal the best giveaway at InfoSec, Pentest Partners Socks. Who would like a pair of the best giveaway at InfoSec? Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions about the crazy demo and other stuff we did, Everyone. come and have a chat with us. Awesome.